Hi, this is Steve Melendres. I am going to do um, the sand formation here with the toothbrush. I can also use a stiff brush, uh, but the toothbrush seems to work better for me. Now, this is just another way of taping off. And um, I use Frisket, which is a plastic, and it works great. There's another form. It's called liquid frisket. So if you want to use it like a, a paintbrush, maybe you want to duplicate uh, the branches or something that's kind of a, looks what you need to do with a paintbrush. That works great. It could also work <clears throat> with a toothbrush. <clears throat> you could dip it in there and sprinkle it on there. Like say you wanted to make stars or maybe sunlight coming through the leaves. Um, this is just another technique. Now, this is just tissue paper. Um, and what I did, let's see if I can bring that out here. Oh, you can't see it there. Okay, so maybe you can see this. Now, you can see there's little tabs connected to some of these. Um, now, I do that on purpose so that when I cut this out of the tissue paper, uh, that's going to be a hole, but that's a, a place where I want to protect. So I'll use this blue tape. And here's another kind of helpful thing. I do not want a super blade edge. So I actually tear the paper. So when I put that over that tab, it doesn't look like it's a straight edge thing. It has a rough texture. Now, um, it's kind of a control thing. So I'm just going to use the colors in my palette right now. Um, now, this is like way too wet. So I just want to get kind of um, somewhat in between and wipe some of this off. And I'm just pulling it like a trigger. And like I said, um, this is kind of going to be up to you what you decide try not to make a very heavy trigger it'll make big dots and, and if you want big hard raw, uh, sand looking things that you know that's up to you um, for but for demonstration purposes like that's kind of strong you just kind of softly, and, and don't be in a hurry. Just slowly build up. My students, <laughs> when I try to show them this technique, of course, they get excited, and they want to see it right away. Um, well, you know, you can control some of the students, um, but um, s students are unpredictable. And sometimes when you get too much, I'll just um, go to my palette and just give it a hit so it doesn't come out strong. Now this is layers. This is kind of a, a umber. I'm going to use raw sienna and burnt umber and ochres. And sand looks different depending if it's wet, if it's in different locations. There is kind of black sand in Hawaii and some other locations, which is kind of cool. Haven't done that technique yet, but um, maybe I'm going to try a little reddish. And the colors are going to be switching around. Now, I'm not going to waste your time, but um, I'm just going to try to concentrate in one little area. So 
So you can see at least one part somewhat finished. Now sometimes I'll look at it and add more. If it gets too dark in some areas, I'll add more white. So like I said, I'm going to go back into this area later. I'm just going to do this for demonstration purposes and finish this up. Now I'm using existing colors that are in my palette right now. So it's ever mixing around. Um, I'm going to be using that. And I'll use even black. Well, not really black. Um, black is a little too harsh. Uh, Payne's gray. I very rarely use black, black. Um, but so I'm using the uh, Payne's gray right now. And it could be some big um, splatters. Could be, you know, large size rocks. Could be. You can go into it and make it. Now, what I would normally do is put a variety of colors. And that's up to you. I'm going into some yellow ochres right now. So it's going to be lighter. And if you look at it, there's all kind of different colors in there. I try to get rid of those little white areas. Sometimes you get to a side and you kind of forget. I want to keep it consistent. And then <clears throat> lastly, um, I'll use white. Uh, white is something uh, that I can control. Uh, when I use white... I try to put uh, a brand new um, dab of white, um, mainly because it's smooth. Now I'm using white. Let's see if I get closer. I can control this pretty well. Now, it's subtle. Now, if I want to go back in there, and like I was saying, I use a fresh little dab of white. I don't want it influenced. Now, I can probably go a little bit whiter here. Um, but I would probably let it dry. And like I said, this is for demonstration purposes. Um, but um, for my personal preference, I would let everything dry so the white will be fresh. Now for the unveil. Um, now, I just finished this, so I'm going to be surprised at what it looks like. And remember, because it's just finished, well, partly finished, um, it will look different. So now I, I come in and soften the edges. And that'll just take a little time. I'll come back in here so you can't really see any of the lines. 
And I'll work in this area a little bit more. Blend this out. Now I may have to bring the water up or bring some more parts of the sand down. It's kind of whatever works for me. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to give you little areas. And if you bring some of that sand into the water, it will have the effect like you can see down to the bottom. And the way I kind of do that is I'll put some of this brown into the water right here. And then go over it with a little bit of white. And that will look like it's having highlights coming in. Anyway, so that is one of the watercolor techniques I'll use. Okay, so this is going over with a little bit of white, blending out the edges. Now, I don't think of this as realism. This is closer to abstract for me. Um, if you look at these things uh, close up, that is not a wave. That is not a rock. It's just lines, shapes, squiggles. And I use my huh, scribble technique, or what I sometimes refer to it as 20 cups of coffee. Um, and just have that kind of jagged move it, movement. Now you can see where I blended it in, so it looks like it's the sand is, or the water is kind of slowly creeping up into the sand. And, you know, it has like reflections. Now, like I said, if you look at this, and if I was to pull in closer, it would be abstract. It would be an illusion. Maybe if you didn't know what the, the whole thing was looking like, if I was to really zoom in, it would look really abstract. So I, I don't think of my work as realistic, photorealistic or anything like that. I, I just try to use my signature to do things. And, and again, th this is just a demonstration on how to use some of my techniques. And that's all. Um, I would probably do this again. It would look totally different. The sand would be a lot lighter. Uh, I would probably do um, different colors of blue for the ocean. Uh, it just depends on how I feel and what color palette I'm using at the time. Anyway, so I'm going to stop there. Thank you.